In this demo, we are exploring the use of chorus in grunge slash alt rock with this. The Callisto version 2 from Cattle Inbred. As always with Cattle Inbred, you've got really lovely graphics on the front of the pedal. You've got rate and depth, which are pretty straightforward with uh, most chorus pedals. Then you've also got feedback knob. Now this gets you into sort of chorus flange type territory. We'll touch on that in a bit. And the mix knob, if you turn that right the way up, you get into a, like a pitch vibrato, which is pretty cool. So think Stranger Things synth tone type things, and you know, you're in the ballpark there. So let's crack on with some tones. I'll explain a little bit more about the workings. Let's start things off with Stone Temple Pilots and Mr. Dean DeLeo. He's a big proponent of thickening his tone up with chorus. Here's Plush with no chorus, but a really lovely um, gain tone to start us off with. <laughs> If we chuck the chorus on with these settings, check this out. It adds a bit of brightness as well as thickness, right? So again, without... And with... Now, if I turn the mix up with all the same settings, you get this. <laughs> Which is really wobbly, right? At 12 o'clock. You know, it's still a little bit too much. And then pull it back to where it was. So using the mix knob is just great for being able to to tone it back to uh, to the level that you want. You'll also hear chorus and gain together in a lot of early Soundgarden tracks like Hunted Down. So with everything in the middle, we have... can't talk about grunge and chorus without talking about Nirvana and I'm deliberately not going to show you come as you are that would be lazy of me and you are better than that so how about one of my favorites in bloom again everything at midday <laughs> again again now if we crank the rate up a little bit we can do some earlier stuff like aneurysm ringing out there's quite a quick rate there but with this with the chords which is a similar tone to what you'd get for ah, sorry a chorus also fits very nicely with an acoustic guitar too so if you ever listen to Alice in Chains Jar of Flies for example you'll hear a very subtle amount of chorus on the acoustic guitar parts for some of that. Now if we take Nutshell for example with no chorus, sounds like this. And then with a subtle bit of chorus it sounds like this. If you bring the mix up a bit more, it's super pronounced. Smashing Pumpkins always use loads of modulation, but more phasery stuff, I would say, than chorus per se. But I really like this setting for the lead part to crush. You know, that um, bass line with you 
Now, with the feedback knob turned a little higher up, you do get into that is it chorus, is it flanger type affair, uh, which Mr. Andy Summers was famous for, wasn't he? You know, it doesn't quite get into, into proper flange. And this brings me on to how a couple of bands will actually use more chorus in live scenarios, like Daniel Johns from Silverchair. So with the same settings, no association tends to have quite a bit more than you'll hear on the album, right? Which actually is reversed, but anyway, live, it sounds a bit more like this. Or in the case of Dave Navarro with Porno for Pyros, if you listen to how they play Hard Charger live, Check these settings out. I mean, they sound like this. You know, quite a crazy tone, but Dave uses that really nicely in the intro. Great, isn't it? Sticking with Mr. Navarro, but some dirt and these settings. One of my favourite um, little uses of choruses in the riff in Been Caught Stealing goes like this. Now if we back off the feedback and the rate and go for some very crazy tuning. And we can get into the ballpark of Sonic Youth Teenage Riot. enjoyed that fun little wander through grunge and alternative rock and i'll play you out with what may be my absolute favorite dean de leo use of chorus dead and bloated see you soon